Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. In this video, we will dive a little bit into Gradle tasks. So in case you've missed the previous video where I uh, showed you the basics of Gradle and you have no understanding of Gradle, then I recommend to watch that video first, which I will link somewhere up here. If you have a rough understanding already, then you're totally fine watching this video and learning about custom tasks, how you can automate cool things in your Android app and a lot more cool stuff. So I am in my built out Gradle app file, just an empty project, or yeah, just the project from the last video, nothing special in here, you can just create an empty project and follow along. And we want to create a custom task now. What a task is, you already learned that in the previous video. So if we take a look at the project file, we see there is already a clean task defined. And that is how we define a task in Gradle. A task in the end is a single thing Gradle should do. In this case, it should clean the project, which is of type delete. So it should delete something and the body is just what it should do. So it should delete the build directory from our root project. So in the end, the clean task just deletes the build directory. So there is no build directory and we can rebuild our project to create a new build directory. So we can, of course, create our very own tasks like that. And we want to do that in the app build.gradle file right here at the very bottom. And let's do the same, it, let's use the same syntax and just create a very simple hello world task. Just like that. And we say print line, hello world. We now click synchronize now, run this task. You will see here's our hello world string. And you'll also notice that the task actually executes right here, but hello world is printed here. So the reason it's printed here is because if we just put the stuff inside of the single task here in this block, uh, then the code is executed once the task is actually configured. If we want to control or if we want to execute code once or be like before or after the task is actually executed, we can use something like do first, which you will um, very commonly face here. We can print something like here, hello world first, and we can do the same with do last, of course print line hello world last. If we now synchronize this and run this task again, you will notice, okay, now we still have our hello world string printed at the very first, which is this one during the configuration phase. However, the hello world first and hello world last string are not executed in that corresponding order when the task is actually executed. You don't always need these um, closures here, do first and do last, but you will face these very often. And if you want to control, or if you want to do something um, dependent on the life cycle of the task, so either be before that or after that, you can use one of these two functions. I will remove these again, because I also want to show you that you can register new tasks inside of a task, which is sometimes really helpful. And how can we do that? Well, there is a function, which is 10 times, for example, and this gives us an integer i. So it's just a simple loop lambda, you can say. So we do this, we execute this block 10 times. And in each iteration, we get um, access to the current value i. So it's just a simple for loop, you can say. And in here, what we want to do is we want to register a new task, which is dependent on this I. So each task, of course, needs to have a name, which is here, hello world. And we want to register a new one. So we can say tasks.register. And the name of that would be task. And we pass our I. It's, yeah, a lot of things here are very similar to Kotlin, like also like passing an argument here in a Lambda, um, but not everything. If you want to have exact same as Kotlin, then you need to use Kotlin uh, Gradle, which we don't have here, we use Groovy. However, we now registered a task here with this corresponding name. And in this block, we can again specify what this task should do. So for example, we have a do last block and we should just print something. So we should print, for example, um, yeah, let's say hello from task I. And if we now synchronize this and run this task, we will see nothing really happens, even though this task was executed. Why is that? Well, the reason is that we just registered these tasks. So Gradle knows about these. However, it didn't really execute these. If we, however, go to our terminal, 
and we use our Gradle wrapper, which if you remember from the uh, past video, can be used to execute tasks from the terminal, then we can actually do exactly that. So since we now registered these 10 tasks here, um, from 0 to 9, I think it should be, we can say Gradle W task 4, for example. So there, Gradle will know there is a task 4, and with that terminal command, we can now execute it. So if we do this, we get hello from task 4, which is exactly what we expect. If we use something like a hello task 11, which doesn't exist, we will get an error because it tells us, yeah, the task 11 was not found in the project because we didn't register such a task. How can we actually make sure that we execute this task from within this hello world task here? So right now, if we run this hello world task, we just register these 10 tasks here. But let's say we also want to run one of these tasks when we click play here. We can very easily do that by going down here and we can say depends on, let's say task one. Depends on is um, a function that you will face so often when you deal with tasks. It's really important to understand this concept that in the end means that this hello world task depends on the task one. So at this point, it will actually realize, okay, I actually need this task one to continue. So what I will do is I will simply run this task one at this, at this place here. So if we now run hello world, you will see, okay, the task one is actually executed. And after that, our hello world task is executed because our hello world task depends on this task one. So it needs this task one to run before this hello world task actually finishes. And we can specify the exact same things for the tasks we registered here by using something like tasks.named task one. So now we can define something for our task one. We get a block of code here. So where we just have this task one as a reference, we can say that task one depends on task four, for example, task six, and let's say task eight. And then this depends on refers to the hello world task again. So let's synchronize this and see what happens if we run this. Then you can see um, that suddenly we get task four being executed first, then task six, then task eight, then task one, and then our hello world task. Because we now constructed a kind of a tree of dependencies, of, of task dependencies, because we said, okay, the task one actually depends on these four, uh, on, of these three tasks here, which means when we want to run task one, which we do here, these three tasks need to run before task one actually finishes. So we, we just, yeah, kind of a tree of dependencies that we defined here, which is something you very commonly need to do with Gradle tasks because, yeah, let's just take the example of building the app. There are so many different tasks involved in putting everything together to an APK that you need to define, okay, this actually needs to be done before this. And that's what you can do with depends on. So now that you have a very basic understanding of um, how we can create a custom task, let's actually do something a little bit more exciting, a little bit more practical, because of course um, we wouldn't define a hello world task in a real project that doesn't do anything for us. Let's define another task here. And well, what should the task do? I thought of um, just creating a little task that once we actually build our project, it takes the generated APK, it copies it to another directory in our app directory, so to kind of back it up, and it will rename it, and then it will also create a file with the checksum of the APK. So in case you don't know what a checksum is, that's basically just a kind of a hash, so a string, a long string of weird characters that is always unique, so that's always the same for the same APK. So as soon as someone actually goes ahead and manipulates your APK, maybe reverse engineers it and changes something, the checksum will change. So that's a very common way to actually detect whether someone has um, changed a specific APK or specific file or not. And we now want to do this so that Gradle automatically takes our generated APK, copies it to another directory, and then also gener generates this checksum. And I want to call this task, um, let's call it copy APK. And here we now actually need a type. 
because the, the functionality of this task goes beyond just the basic functionality and it should actually deal with some files, for example, and the type is actually just copy because we want to copy something in this task. And let's actually now synchronize now here, switch to the project view, I will minimize this here and go to build, actually not build here in the app folder, we go to build and here in intermediates, we have an APK folder where we have a debug folder with our app debug APK. So whenever we build a project, Android Studio or Gradle rather will generate this app debug APK. And we now want to take this, so we want to locate this with our Gradle task and copy it to an APK folder in our root project structure. So down here in copy APK, let's first define our source directory. So this debug um, directory where our APK is currently at. We can create variables with um, dev in Gradle. So we can say source destination is equal to, and we can get this by layout build directory dot directory. So we now get a relative directory um, to our build directory. And we now need to follow it up with, um, what is it? Intermediates slash apk slash debug and then app debug apk so th that's the current path to our apk file and then we want to have another variable here which is the destination directory let's call this um, actually source directory rather so we have a source directory and a destination directory and that is actually just relative to our root directory so our you know, our root directory of the project. And then let's create an APK folder where we want to put this. It will automatically create that folder for us. And now since we actually use this copy type here, that actually takes two types of functions. On the one hand, we need to define from where we want to copy and then to where we want to copy something. So from where, well, that's our source directory. Oops, source directory. And we want to copy it into our destination directory, just like that. And if we now click synchronize now, then we can, or we should actually already be able to, to, uh, to run this task. And you can see here's our APK folder and it successfully copied that app debug APK. However, what does not work yet is that it, this task is automatically executed after rebuild. So just to show you that if we rebuild our project, then even if we remove this APK folder here, then it, it won't reappear here, even though the rebuild is now finished. How can we do that? Well, for that, we actually need to find the task that is already like included in Android Studio, you can say, which kind of, which is executed right before the APK is assembled together. And that task is called assemble debug. So what we can do is outside of this copy APK task is we can use tasks, which returns a list of all tasks that are registered to Gradle. And here we have a function when task added. So that function is executed for every single task that is added to Gradle. We can get a reference to that, just like that, like a normal Kotlin Lambda. And then we can check if the task name is actually equal to assemble debug, because that is the task we're looking for. And then we can say, task dot finalized finalized by copy apk so what that means is that after this task actually runs it will call our copy apk task and if we now click synchronize now again there is no apk directory and if we now rebuild the project you will see now it actually created that apk directory with our apk in there However, we're not fully done yet. I'd also like to show you how to rename this APK that we copied there because there is a simple rename command which we can use. And we could say, okay, we want to rename app debug APK to let's say Gradle experiment APK. Synchronize now, execute this task. And then we should already see that it renames this. No, because it probably, let's, remove this directory first and then execute it again. APK, and you can see now there is Gradle Experiment APK. However, one more thing uh, we actually want to do, and that is the checksum. So first of all, we need a file reference to our APK, which we can just create like a normal Java file here. So this one, 
which will take the path name. So first of all, well, where is our APK? It is in our destination directory. And the APK name is Gradle Experiment APK. And then we can use something called and. That's just uh, something that can be used to calculate checksums. And here we can say and checksum. Let me minimize this here, by the way. And checksum. And we pass the file, which is actually the path of the file. So we can say file a path. If we click synchronize now. And let's just rebuild our project to see if everything is working. And you can see it now generated a Gradle experiment APK MD5. And if we open this, here is our checksum. And as soon as this APK is actually changed, the checksum would be different from that, from uh, this one here. And someone would actually see, okay, that is actually not the APK, the official APK. Um, that might be a virus or so because someone changed it. Um, so that's a pretty cool way to, de uh, to detect changes. I have one more thing I want to show you, and that's actually not a new concept. And that is that we can also add a depends on parameter here. So what we could do here is we could say depends on test. Test is a task that is already um, registered from within uh, like the, the Gradle Android Studio plugin. And what test is, will do is it will simply run your unit tests. And if we say depends on test here, that means it will run your unit tests before this copy apk function or this copy apk task is actually executed so in case you only want to back your uh, back up your apk if your unit tests actually pass you could add something like depends on test which is maybe something common you want to do here if we click synchronize now and rebuild our project then let's wait for that and you can see nothing actually um, went wrong here, so you just copied your APK again. However, if we go to Android View, and we have an example unit test here. So that's just the normal unit test that is generated when you create a project, and it just tests if uh, yeah four is equal to two plus two, which is of course true. However, if we make this test fail, so we test if four is actually equal to two plus three, which is not true anymore, and we rebuild our project, then you will now see we actually get a Gradle error because it ran our unit tests. Um, you can see um, one test completed, one failed. So it actually did run this addition is correct and that failed. So that's a very cool way to actually make sure that your tests run before you do something inside of a Gradle task. So that's also very helpful, of course, if you want to deploy your app to, to maybe back it up somewhere else, to maybe upload it to Google Play. And you want to make sure that your tests actually run before you do that, then you can do that very easily by just letting that test depend on test. And you could, of, of course, also do that to let it depend on the Android test, so your UI tests and stuff like that. And I think that's really most of the things you need as an Android developer when it comes to doing things with Gradle. Of course, you can get much more advanced than this, and there is a very long Gradle documentation um, but very often you don't need these super advanced things when it comes to Gradle. Um, if, however, you want to also learn how to use the Kotlin DSL version of Gradle, so not a groovy one, which we did here, instead the Kotlin one, and you want to learn how to migrate that, um, I just don't know how many people would really like to see that. Then just comment it down below, and maybe um, if a lot of people want that, I will make another video about that. Other than that, thanks a lot for watching. Have an amazing day and see you back in the next video. Bye bye.